I got into science basically based on what I find visually appealing. Um, I saw lots of really nice pictures with lots of patterns, lots of fancy patterns that were created by um, mathematical objects called fractals. And in trying to figure out how those pictures were created, I became interested more in the notion of mathematics and mathematical modeling itself. And then I just kept asking why. Never particularly stopped. Don't particularly want to stop. The importance of studying networks lies in, in two facts. For one thing, it's fun, which is ultimately what I care about. For another, it's ubiquitous. It's a language that shows up in many places. And there's a lot of mathematics underneath it, and that also adds to the excitement of trying to learn about it. Networks are everywhere. So on, on my right, you have we set out to teach students about um, the mathematics of networks. We've done this through workshops at Somerville where some students have come to visit and also through visiting them at their schools. The nodes are just individuals. The edges are self -identified. Many other areas of mathematics, in order to even explain the problem in the first place, you have to go through a, a lot of preparation. And for networks, you can say, okay, well, how do you think that Facebook recommends friends to you? And a, and a lot of people who are young will already say, yeah, I wonder how that happens. So I'm guessing you guys know now what a network is? We Can wanted to pick students who um, had not yet chosen what they wanted to study in university, so we focused on year nine, so 13 and 14 year olds. Does this look like a network? Our own ability Something to communicate has gotten better. Um, sometimes we tried analogies that we thought might work, but didn't work. Or we were using too much jargon. So the, these were very nice bridges. And he was wondering if you could do a walk of the city in which you came back to your starting point and you cross every bridge exactly once. I think the team has gotten better as things have gone on. I mean, that's an, that's an obvious statement, but it's still nice to, nice to observe it. Who thinks that is possible? I, I, yeah. Some of us are not allowed to vote because we've seen the problem before. So the answer is no, you can't do it. I think the biggest surprise in the workshops was, was that the most successful module was a theoretical mathematics module about graph theory. I really liked that stuff, but I wasn't expecting students to be necessarily as engaged in that one. We show the students every planar map can be colored by four or fewer colors. But there was one student who just kept trying to get five colors and he was not deterred by the fact that we told him it was mathematically impossible. And that's the type of persistence that, that you want to see. So it really shows the power of mathematics because you just need the abstract mathematics presented in an exciting way. Mostly the kids have reacted very well to this. We've gotten a lot of nice positive feedback. They, they seem to be excited. I didn't know about networks. And then uh, I had never thought really about the four colours and the different colours in the maps. It was kind of like a new perspective with maths. We kind of learned that it's not just about numbers and stuff. It's just in day-to-day -day life as well. Mathematics is everywhere. I'm hoping that more of them will go into mathematics. The ones who don't go into mathematics, I'm hoping more of them will go into science. And even someone who just does the same thing that they would have done before, I hope that they go look at the world and, and they go outside after, after the, the talk and throughout their lives and say, I see a network there.